welcome to Shanghai. I'm Chen Xuan. Hi, I'm Timothy Pope. Robotics is hardly new. For decades, robotic arms have dominated assembly lines, while smart facilities have even entered our homes. This TV camera right here is actually on a huge robotic arm attached to the ceiling. Yet today's AI revolution is reshaping the field. Humanoid robots are leaping from sci-fi and into reality. My colleague Tang Xiaofan talked to some humanoid robot developers to see their latest achievements. Guess how popular humanoid robots are. Even while strolling around the park, I bump into a robotic buddy. There's no doubt robots are popping up in more places. You can find them at marathons, exhibitions, and consultation centers. They shake hands, answer questions, do somersaults, dance, and perhaps most importantly, make coffee. Robotics is big business and has been for years. The manufacturing sector has used the robots on production lines for decades, and consumers have embraced things like automated vacuum cleaners and smart speakers. Most of the robots we use today don't look like us, but the emergence of AI has expanded robotic systems beyond basic industrial applications to the point where humanoid robots in our workplaces and homes is not some far-fetched idea. As you see Optimus develop, it's really going to transform the, the world, uh, I think, to a degree even greater than the cars. Most of the current prototypes are clumsy and impractical, looking better in stage performances than in real life. But that hasn't stopped a handful of startups from keeping at it. Oh. At Zhangjiang High Tech Park, I met Wang Lei, founder of Qingbao Robotics. He and his team are developing humanoid robots with lifelike facial expressions and movements. Qingbao's orders have soared this year. Wang said, robots are now mainly used as scenic sports and in the service sector. But his company is ramping up efforts to develop robots for security, elderly care, and other applications. After interacting with these robots, I was still left thinking, how practical is this stuff? Do we really need them? Well, there's no definitive answer to this question. The possibilities are promising. China faces an aging population, with people aged 60 and above expected to surpass 400 million by 2035. The country already has a shortage of 5.5 million elderly care workers. Caregiving robots may be a viable solution in filling this critical need. At Fudan University, I saw a prototype humanoid robot designed for elderly care applications. It's 165 centimeters tall and weighs 62 kilograms. We are currently working with Fudan Fushuhuadong Yiyuan to make a strong effort to make a strong effort to make a strong effort. 比如说智能轮椅啊,辅助防身的智能床,以及人机融合的那种设备。我们人心机器人在这个里面,它还可以起一个协调,一个管家的一个作用,因为它干不了,但是它可以让其他的设备来展体完成我们这个护理抗氧
AI and manufacturing costs are dropping, so affordable robot helpers may be in more homes as caregivers, companions or co-workers sooner than expected. But what challenges remain? Tang Xiaofan shares some of her findings. Holding around two-thirds of global robotics patents, China has been the world's largest market for industrial robots for more than a decade. And this expertise is the foundation for its clout in the emerging field of humanoid robotics. Hangzhou-based Unitry Robotics made a significant move by making two of his humanoid robots available for consumer purchase on JD.com. And Shanghai robotics startup Edgebot has already achieved its aim of producing 5,000 humanoid robots. Morgan Stanley's recent report on humanoid robots reveals that 35 Chinese companies are listed in the world's top 100 leading humanoid robotics companies. China dominates 63% of the global humanoid robotics supply chain. While China produces six of the world's 16 major humanoid models, core technologies like AI algorithms remain foreign-led. But the emergence of DeepSeek is bridging the gap. DeepSeek本来在模型的生成 However, Liu points out, challenges remain before humanoid robots can perform complex, long-duration tasks or achieve widespread household adoption. Given stability and safety requirements, developers must be very cautious when exploring practical, real-life applications. Tayo 我们国家从产业链角度来讲，呃，做人形机器人应该是呃最齐全的，呃，全产业链也是最完整的，呃，所以这呃成本呢，它肯定呃在国内未来的话，会一步一步的下降，可能用不了多长时间，可能也就几万
Shanghai and Hong Kong have integrated their public transportation payment systems, making travel from one city to the other more convenient. With Hong Kong's mass transit railway joining the China T-Union network, Shanghai residents can now use their public transportation cards, whether physical or NFC, with the Transit Union logo to tap and ride on Hong Kong's MTR network without purchasing tickets or exchanging currency. You just need to ensure your card has the Transit Union logo and then tap it at the gates displaying the same logo at any MTR station in Hong Kong. Likewise, Hong Kong residents holding an octopus card featuring the Transit Union logo can also use them across Shanghai's public transportation network, including buses, metro and ferries. The China T-Union network connects 336 cities and more than 1,700 counties and districts across the Chinese mainland, streamlining intercity travel across various modes of public transportation. And now time for Shanghai IQ&A. Today's question is from Sophie from Canada. I learned that Shanghai parents who have children between one and three can place the kids in community daycare centers. So is this service also open to expats? Yes, Sophie. Community daycare centers across Shanghai are now open to all residents, including those from overseas. What's more, they now having a bilingual service online for appointments. You can find links to the application service in the Suishen Ban app. Well, if you have a question for us, you can find us on the socials. We'd love to hear from you. You can find all our content online as always. And join us here on Dragon TV, Monday to Friday. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye.